<laughs> yeah. So welcome everyone uh, for this very last uh, uh, panel. Uh, actually, even for this very moment, I'm not sure whether uh, whether everyone will be here. I know uh, one uh, author, not really author, but panelist, uh, Nikita Liutov, whom I know as much as I know he won't be here. Neither personally he is not here, but not even on uh, on Zoom, uh, online. Uh, and I don't know whether, because we have only an abstract from last year from him, I don't know whether we can discuss. Uh, uh, the other three panelists will be here personally too, and one uh, panelist will be present online. So I would pass the floor first to Nicola. Uh, Nicola, Nicola Leonardo, yeah. I, I, I'm always uncertain about the pronunciation. <laughs> De Leonardis. Yeah, yeah that's right. That, that's okay. <laughs> right, so uh, who uh, writes about the uh, structures and policies for post-pandemic labor market, the role of trade unions, but this will be not only about trade unions, but a lot of other formations. Yeah, but uh, uh, starting yeah. from this point that the trade union should have an important role now. Yes, yes. Start, Actually, let's start from an historical point of view. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I thought this, uh, this uh, uh, session is a kind of historic uh, uh, adventure <laughs> in the past and future, to some extent, you will see from the various presentations, but might be very rightly so, because as you could hear throughout the two days, there are suppositions, there are hopes, there are signs, but we do not really know the exact way ahead after the uh, pandemic. So, I give you the floor. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I would like to, to thank, uh, of course, uh, Marco Biaggi Foundation and uh, the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia. The topic that I, uh, together with my colleague, uh, the Daniela Lafratta, decided to indicate is the trade union's role in the post-pandemic labor market. Preliminary, I want to say that the legislator has made our work easier because when in August we were thinking about the, the, the theme to, to propose <laughs> for this comfort paper, uh, we, we have sought every law which could support our thesis. After two months, more or less, the legislator introduced legal provisions which we call our uh, idea that moves to the necessity to give again to the trade union the primary role exercised uh, since the end of the 19th century and, we, and uh, which has been uh, lost over time. Those legal provisions are the ministerial, uh, uh, the goal program, in, uh, program introduced by the ministerial decree of the 5 of November 2021. Uh, goal means guarantee occupability for workers and uh, later, the Article 1, Paragraph 249 and 240 of the Law Budget for the 2022, that the Law Number 234 of the 2021. Starting from this point, um, I have to, to say, firstly, that some scholar underlines that in Italy, the historical primary task of trade unions was monitoring over the labor market to control workers' wages. To explain better what I mean, I need to recall an old law now repealed, that is the law number 83 of the 1970. This law regulated public uh, employment services in the agricultural sector until the end of the 20th century. The law uh, was no perfect and did not work as old. But I believe that two aspects of the law have to be underlined. First of all, the importance of the total governance of the labor market for the trade unions. It did not refer to the exclusive control by trade unions 
over the labor market. But in accordance, uh, in agreement with the public offices, it meant a governance of the labor market by the labor commissions with a trade union majority that started from the level of production and employment up to, to the compliance with uh, employment contracts according to a national and um, overall territorial level. The second one that is directly uh, linked to the first one is the close bond uh, between law number 83 of the 1970 and collective bargaining. Able uh, link the bond able to, to guarantee the protection of wages according to the professionalism of workers. This task was performed by provincial labor commissions in the defining the professional uh, qualification according to collective uh, bargaining, bargaining, bargaining provisions, as provided for by Article 5 and uh, Article 12, Paragraph 6 of the law number 83. In this way, uh, worker would ensure the skills by certification could be sent uh, to work by municipal labor commission according to collective uh, bargaining provisions wages, ensuring uh, a certain coherence between individual professional capacity uh, of the worker and the performance required by the market and by the, uh, the enterprises, even in the event of a change of workers' duties as provided for by Article 14 of the Law 83, of course. I'm aware uh, it's not possible today to invoke the state trade union's function in the absence of the monopoly of public placement. But I think that can be possible valorize the same uh, this function according a new perspective. From a theoretical point of view, uh, many scholars underline that the double phase of the Article 4 of the Italian Constitution, which guarantees the right to work. The right to work should be protect, protected both in the recruitment and dismissals. The trade union's role in dismissal procedure is sanctioned by law number 223 of the 1981, which provides for the obligation of consultation with trade unions for the enterprises that want to proceed with collective dismissals. According to the Article 4 of the Constitution, as I have just said, social partners should have an important role in fostering employment and employability of, uh, of workers because the Article 4 is an individual subjective right in a predominantly collective implementation. It means that the right to work can be developed in a collective way through, through, through the um, collective uh, uh, yeah, the, the trade unions action so according to this idea, trade unions should protect the workers' position in labor market. Two, um, when, when, when the employment relationship has not yet been established, so before, in order to guarantee fair wages as defined by collective bargaining. In this way, it seems that legislators support this idea, this goal. Firstly, it should be recalled the agreement protocols uh, signed by the Prime Minister and CGL, Cheese and Will, that are the three most important trade unions in Italy. Protocols signed uh, on the 23 December of the 2021, which binds to the trade unions' participation in monitoring the concrete realization of the PNRR in the territories. Oh, PR, PNRR means National Recovery and Resilience Plan. Secondly, most uh, recently, the Gold Program and the Article 1, Paragraph 2049 and 2050 of the Budget Law for the 2022, counts trade unions among the, the, private, the private 
subject potentially uh, promoters of the territorial pacts together with public agency and networking business in order to foster training, employability and employment for workers in the areas of ecological and digital transition. I think that uh, those uh, territorial agreements can find the reference in territorial social bargaining that acts next to the collective bargainings. In fact, while the collective bargainings regulates working condition, the territorial social bargaining has been used still now by trade unions, especially in a welfare and well-being perspective dealing with uh, social need, especially for, for citizens. But there are cases of labor market facts. I do believe that the labor market issues could be implemented to, to promote the workers' employment and employability and to monitor over the wages through territorial social bargaining, because it preserves collective identity of the trade unions. The territorial social bargaining at the same time as the collective bargaining does not act as a tool aimed at satisfying individual interest, but responds to a collective interest based on public and trade union principles. Moreover, the territorial social bargaining can quietly uh, act according to the role that legislature entrusts to the trade union in the goal program and in the low budget of the 2022. So we have hypothesized uh, two ways for the collective social bargaining in the labor market. The first one is the accidental territorial social bargaining, or TSB that can be used in order to promote the placement of surpluses uh, staff as a group of workers. The GOAL program, in fact, describes the possibility that trade unions can intervene in case of collective dismissals for company crisis, fostering agreement of workers' employment. This trade union's role, role is important taking into account the right of information and consultation enjoyed by trade union representatives as regulated by Article 4 of the Law 2023 of the 1981. And those uh, trade unions' rights should guarantee a knowledge of the workers' professionalism involved in the dismissal procedure, as well as of the potential company target interested in hiring workers with specific professional skills. This particular form of uh, active intervention in the labor market by trade unions, so I mean, of course, the, uh, the accidental TSB, could occur in two different moments, simultaneously uh, to the procedure of the dismissal or after the conclusion of the procedure referred to Article 4, to in the Article 4 of the law, of the law number 2023, and culminating in a pact of collective uh, placement to accompany other uh, than the one being in a state of crisis. In this case, the, the planning function could be shared by trade union with AMPAL, National Agency Labor Active Policies, pursuant to Article 9, Paragraph 1, Letter P of the Legislative Decree Number 150 of the 2015, which attributes to active policies at national level the function of managing reemployment and placement program regarding the crisis of territorial enterprises and experimental programs of active labor policies. In this way, the mixture of public interest, uh, the state interest, and the collective interest, workers' representative interest, would be realized 
through encouraging a multi-level system in which national and territorial uh, actors, and so public and private actors, met. The second one is the programmatic territorial social bargaining, aimed to plan that employed skills strengthening and to employ them, to employ this potentially worker according to the need of the productive and social framework of the territory. This strategy of uh, intervention of regional um, active policies would find the normative reference in Article 11, Paragraph 2, Letter A of Legislative Decree Number 150 of the 2015, which entrusts the, the success of the, the regions with the identification of original employment strategies. The success of this model, in my opinion, depends on uh, depends to the capacity of involvement of private subjects, uh, private employment uh, agencies, and the networked companies as regulated by law 33 of the 2009. We believe that the networked companies' interest can include the interest to improve the workers' skills in order to hire them, especially if the training is supported by employment services in order to benefit of workforce uh, to, to train according to the business needs and territorial needs. It's something, here is something is missing, yes. Okay, I don't know what's happening. In conclusion, we want to remark, I want to remark that with this legal provision, trade unions can play a crucial role in labor markets. Um, through the territorial social uh, bargaining uh, for the workers' uh, employment, trade unions can know better the territorial labor forces flows and protect workers before the recruitment to, to negotiate better working conditions and to supervise over the wages in accordance with collective bargaining. Of course, the success of this model depends on the real balance of forces existing on the territory and depends on uh, the stakeholders' will. Thanks for the attention. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. I, I don't know whether you could feel uh, that uh, the, the presentation and the paper is plenty of uh, uh, new ideas. At the same time, uh, they are, uh, whoever is, I know Attila, who is from Eastern Europe here, uh, how to say, um, recalling memories from the state-owned economy the measures about placement and uh, uh, dealing with uh, uh, labor force management in a territory or in a country. So for me, it was that's why I started the the whole panel with a <laughs> statement that we are making uh, an adventure across history. We will see in other papers as well. Now, I would like to know whether uh, you you can stay uh, or whatever. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know. Whether, uh, no, no, maybe uh, yes, the uh, next need, yeah. So we, we will have now uh, Tatiana Izbaniova, yes? Stepan okay. Lomachenko. Oh, yeah, thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay. Can you Can you hear? Okay. I can okay. hear you uh, quite well. Yeah, yeah, okay, very good. Okay, um, Tatiana, тогда начинаем. Вам нужно свой экран продемонстрировать. Okay. Okay, I think we can start now. Uh, Tatiana, вы видите экран? No, no, uh -huh. okay. Uh, уважаемые дамы и господа, я хочу поблагодарить вас за возможность выступить на столь представительной конференции. 
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this opportunity uh, for allowing me to uh, present my um, uh, research uh, at this um, at this conference. Итак, трудовое право России подверглось жесткому вызову пандемии COVID-19, поскольку в стране сложилась ситуация, когда государство переложило основное бремя затрат, связанных с локдауном, на работодателей которые не способны вести, нести финансовые издержки от простоев. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic defied the labor law in Russia. The reality is that the state has actually shifted the main burden of costs associated with the lockdown and employee downtime to the employers, who are in fact unable to bear the financial costs of uh, halting production. Uh, работодатели стремились перенести все свои потери на работников, в том числе путем uh, нарушения трудовых прав. And in their turn, the employers sought to transfer the losses uh, to workers themselves by violating their labor rights. Uh, принятые в России во время пандемии законодательные положения, регулирующие трудовые вопросы, по мнению российских ученых и юристов, создали множество неоднозначных с правовой точки зрения ситуаций. And the provisions that regulate the labor issues adopted uh, in the Russian Federation during the pandemic have uh, created many ambiguous situations from a legal point of view, according to the scientists and lawyers. В частности, формы охраны здоровья работников в период пандемии свелись к установке особых правил, Работы в труднодоступных местностях, преимущественно на Крайнем Севере, где производится добыча углеводородов, а также к ограничению работы невакцинированных сотрудников. Uh, particularly, the forms of protecting the health of workers during the pandemic were reduced to special rules for working in hard-to-reach areas, uh, mainly in the far north of Russia, where uh, hydrocarbons are extracted as well as restrictions of unvaccinated workers to work. Так, например, в 2020-2021 годах в российских средствах массовой информации особенно широко освещались протестные акции работников, занятых на строительстве газопроводов на Крайнем Севере, среди которых распространялась э, инфекция COVID-19, и медицинских работников, которые, работая в загруженном режиме, не получали государственных надбавок за работу с инфицированными, либо получали их в меньшем размере. And in 2020 and 2021, the Russian media widely covered the protests of workers involved in the construction, in the construction of gas pipelines in the far north, among whom the COVID-19 infection began to spread, as well as the overloaded medical workers who did not receive the promised by the state allowance for working with the COVID-19 infected patients or receive their allowance, but at a very at a lower level. Uh, excuse me, Tatiana, uh, вам нужно, наверное, слайд переключить. Oh, у вас должны быть um, uh, контроль. No. Um, excuse me, oh. Tatiana says that she's not able to switch the slides. Uh, can you do? Okay. Who did uh, Tatiana это вы сделали? Who did it? Да, uh, появилась. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, we go on. Yeah, Tatiana, появилась. please. Uh, для пояснения сложности ситуации, с которой столкнулись работники в период пандемии, локдауна, необходимо отметить, что российское законодательство содержит множество положений, которые непропорционально ограничивают коллективные трудовые права работников. Uh -huh. To explain the complexity of the situation that the employers faced during the lockdown, it should be noted that there are a number of provisions in the Russian labor law that disappropriately restrict the collective, uh, collective labor right to workers. Так, нормы Трудового кодекса запрещают забастовки в организациях энергообеспечения, отопления, теплоснабжения, водоснабжения, в больницах. В том случае, если проведение забастовок а, создает угрозу обороне страны и безопасности государства, жизни и здоровью людей. Uh, this way, for example, in the norms of the labor code of the Russian Federation, 
uh, it is prohibited to strike uh, in organizations that deal with energy supply, heating and heat supply, water supply, gas supply in hospitals in case when uh, the strike poses a threat to the country's defense and the state security, life and health of uh, its people. При этом забастовки авиационного персонала гражданской авиации, который занимается обслуживанием и управлением воздушного движения, забастовки работников железнодорожного транспорта, деятельность которых связана с движением поездов и обслуживанием пассажиров, абсолютно запрещены законодательством о транспорте. At the same time, the strikes of civil aviation personnel performing their traffic maintenance and control Railway transport workers whose activities are related to the movement of trains and servicing passengers are absolutely prohibited by special legislation. Указанные ограничения на забастовку противоречат позиции Комитета Международной Организации Труда по свободе объединения, которая высказана в сборнике решений принципов 2006 года в разделе «Право на забастовку». Uh, but these restrictions are actually contradict uh, a number of documents. Um, for example, the position of the Freedom of Association Committee of the Governing Body of the ILO expressed in the Digest of Decisions and Principles uh, in 2006. Также противоречит статье 6 Европейской социальной хартии, гласящей, что в целях обеспечения эффективного осуществления права на ведение коллективных переговоров Стороны признают право работников и работодателей на коллективные действия и так далее. Однако после э, заявленного 15 марта 2002 года выхода России из Совета Европы вопрос об исполнении в России норм Харти остается открытым. Uh, it also contradicts uh, Article 6 of the European Social Charter, uh, revised, which states that in order to ensure the effective exercise of the right to collective bargaining, the parties recognize the right of workers and employers to collectively act in case of conflicts of interests, including the right to strike. But Russia withdrew from the Council of Europe, uh, and it was announced on the 15th of March 2022, so the question of implementations of the charter's norms in Russia remain open. Также противоречит статье 11 Конвенции о защите прав человека и основных свобод, которая гласит, что каждый имеет право на свободу мирных собраний, на свободу объединения с другими, включая право создавать профессиональные союзы для защиты своих прав. It also contradicts Article 11 of the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and, Fund and Fundamental Freedoms, uh, which states that everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and to freedom of association with others, including the right to form and join trade unions to protect their interests. Вопрос о соответствии положений законодательства, ограничивающего право на забастовку на железнодорожном транспорте, был рассмотрен Европейским судом по правам человека в контексте жалобы гражданина Огневенко против России. Uh, the issue of compliance with the provisions of the legislation and the restriction, uh, restricting the rights to strike on the railway transport was examined by the ECHR in the context of the complaint of citizen Agnichenko against the Russian Federation. Заявитель жаловался в соответствии со статьей 11 конвенции на свое увольнение из российских железных дорог за участие в забастовке, которая была организована профсоюзом. Uh, the applicant disagreed with his dismissal from the public company Russian Railways for participating in, in a strike that has been organized by his trade union in accordance with Article 11 of the Convention. Европейский суд по правам человека усмотрел нарушение требований статьи 11 Конвенции, поскольку она предусматривает свободу профессиональных союзов в качестве одной из форм аспекта свободы объединения. And in this case, the ECHR found a violation of the requirements of Article 11 of the Convention for the Protection of Human Rights and Fundamental Freedoms, since paragraph 1 of the Article 11 of the Convention provides for freedom of trade unions as a form of special aspect of freedom of associations. Еще одной особенностью российского коллективного трудового права является 
то, что профессиональные союзы фактически лишены права на принятие решения об объявлении забастовки. And the convention guarantees the freedom to defend the professional interests of union members through union action, uh, the conduct and realization of which uh, the countries uh, that adhere to the convention must authorize and make possible. Необходимо пояснить, что в России правом на принятие решения об объявлении забастовки обладает общее собрание работников, а у профсоюза имеется лишь право по фактически координации работы. Okay. So, excuse me, could you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Uh, please, uh, uh, time is passing on, and there was uh, altogether 15 minutes for this. So we had a very clear uh, and I would say genuine picture mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. of the regulation uh, in in uh, Russia. But uh, it would be good to hear about the post-COVID uh, measures and steps, uh, because uh, I think no more than five more minutes is at your disposal. Um, okay, Tatiana, uh, говорят нам, что у нас осталось пять минут, и okay. если возможно, мы бы, uh, okay. они бы хотели увидеть о том, uh, какие uh, меры при, um, сейчас предпринимаются в пост-ковид uh, времени. Um, или, может быть, мы уже uh, к выводам, да, возможно. Uh, Названные ограничения коллективных трудовых прав граждан, особенно в связи с проведением военной специальной операции, в совокупности с нарушениями, допускаемыми бизнесом и государственными структурами, создали вызовы перед российскими работниками и немногочисленными профсоюзами. Uh, so the events of February 2022 uh, that are still ongoing, that are formally referred as the special military operation in Russia, and the subsequent sanctions brought the labor market to the verge of shock and created real um, prerequisites for the complete elimination of certain segments of collective labor law. И главными тенденциями влияния пандемии COVID-19 на сферу коллективных трудовых прав в России являются сокращение использования правовых процедур разрешение коллективных трудовых споров в реальном секторе экономики reducing the the use of legal procedures for resolving collective labor disputes in the real sector of the economy Рост коллективных трудовых споров с участием профессиональных союзов, объединяющих лиц, занятых через интернет-платформы. Delivery Club, Ubora, Яндекс и так далее. The growth of collective labor disputes with the participants of trade unions uh, uniting people employed through the internet platforms. Among them are Delivery Club, Foodora, Яндекс Еда, Яндекс Такси, Uber and others. Действия таких субъектов реализуются главным образом в плоскости коллективных протестных акций, организуемых с использованием социальных сетей, например, Facebook, через которые профсоюзы планируют и организуют коллективные защитные акции по своему содержанию, в большей степени тяготеющие к забастовкам. Uh, the actions of such actors are carried out mainly in the plane of collective protest actions organized using social media, for example, Facebook and other messengers, through which the trade unions plan their actions. These actions, in terms of their content and nature, tend to resemble strikes to a great extent. Деятельность таких российских профсоюзов напоминает скорее стихийные формы защиты, схожие с итальянскими и испанскими э, формами защиты защиты профсоюзов, курьеров по доставке еды, что автоматически придает их деятельности в контексте российского права неправовой характер. Uh, the activities of such Russian trade unions resemble the spontaneous form of uh, protection used by the Italian and the Spanish trade unions of food delivery men, 
uh, which automatically makes their actions illegal in the context of Russian legislation. Особенности российского трудового права не позволяют таким профсоюзам участвовать в легальных социально-партнерских процедурах. А их а также сам статус членов независимых подрядчиков закрывает перед ними возможность выступать в качестве легитимных представительных органов во взаимодействиях с бизнесом и государством. Uh, the lack of a legislative opportunity for such trade unions to participate in legal social partnership procedures, as well as the status of members independent contractors, makes it impossible to act as legitimate representative bodies in relations with businesses uh, and the state. Еще одна тенденция заключается в росте количества так называемых альтернативных профессиональных союзов работников гиг экономики, цифровых платформ. Uh, another um, uh, feature of this is the growth of so-called alternative uh, trade unions. Sorry, uh, could you could you finish in one minute? Okay, uh, Tatiana, у нас одна минута. Давайте, uh, может быть, в самый конец. Да. И uh, все это вызывает необходимость в корректировке норм российского коллективного трудового права в части расширения права на забастовки и в распространении права на коллективные переговоры, консультации и коллективные переговоры всех неустойчиво занятых работников. Uh, all this calls to uh, changes in the labor law, um, especially in the sector where the so-called um, uh, contractors are employed. На этом я благодарю уважаемых коллег за возможность выступить и жду вопросов при их наличии. Okay, so we thank you for your, uh, Tiana, thanks for your attention and is eager to answer your questions if, if you have any. Thank you. Uh, and now I uh, ask uh, uh, Stefano Guadagno, first of all, thanking him for his technical assistance so far, <laughs> and now to present his uh, uh, paper on uh, labor and antitrust anti anti in the jig economy. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the patience. And, and I, I really ask you. Yeah, yeah, I will be. I will be very uh, 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 short um, according to the time constraints. I'll start by saying that I analyzed uh, an antitrust lawsuit, but I won't go into details. Actually, fortunately, uh, luckily, it's the last slide, so we can kind of skip it and can uh, uh, give details if you are interested in the in the in the discussion afterwards. Uh, we know that the recourse to non southern forms of employment is a, is a key driver of the uh, modern uh, um, economy. And the main, the main features of these business models are the classification of workers or, and of, as autonomous workers, as well as a pay structure linked to the completion of specific tasks, from delivering services to uh, developing apps and, and games. Um, However, um, uh, while on one hand, uh, the reliance to this kind of alternative arrangement can uh, provide workers and employers with a broader range of options in accommodating their needs and uh, allowing them for greater flexibility, uh, we have to also point out that the main and the majority of services and activities carried out in the gig economy do not represent new economic activities that they tend to become the main source of incomes of otherwise unemployed or underemployed individuals, that the fact that uh, many of the companies involved in the gig economies um, derive their commercial success and economic viability both from their ability to maintain low labor costs and also for uh, um, by um, on, on the on the point that uh, the, uh, that uh, through concentration 
uh, efforts because the intense competition between companies that offer similar of overlapping services uh, actually drives uh, the companies towards concentration, acquisition, mergers, and, and, and therefore they tend to um, acquire the, the widest share as possible, both of the available workforce, but also of the potential customers in order to guarantee their commercial success. And as market consolidates, uh, the companies may reduce the benefits and incentives that they offer to workers and customers by reducing uh, the, 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 the working incentives and wages by prohibiting or discouraging the multi-employership of, of workers to different companies or platforms and to induce the continuous availability of the workers. And we know that in many cases uh, regarding the platform economy, one of the main key points was actually the uh, autonomy and flexibility of the choices of the workers vis-a-vis -vis the organizational structure of the company limiting it. Alongside the more classical jobs that we tend to link to the gig economy, the current landscape of professional combat sports presents striking analogies with non standard forms of employment, in particular with regards to the main features of the working relationship, in particular with the, with the working condition and the social protection of the various actors involved. And um, we see that a very large uh, MMA proportion is seen as in significant increase in company value but this has not been complemented by an increase in, comp in average salaries or in a change in its labor practices and relations. There has been a series of uh, unionization efforts, similarly to those who had happened in other sectors, or in particular of the US economy in very recent times. We've seen Amazon, Starbucks, we've seen uh, uh, game companies, uh, publishing companies, which have uh, be, have been experiencing these unionization efforts. However, these unionization efforts have failed in the 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 professional combat sports uh, sector. But at the same time, uh, there there has been um, um, an antitrust uh, lawsuit, which is currently being discussed. Um, that may provide a test bed for further regulation in providing an effective protection to particularly vulnerable categories of workers independently from their, uh, uh, for the options connected to the classification available in a specific legal setting in terms of subordinate of autonomous workers. The main necessity is um, within the legislative and judicial context has been to determine and define the status of the workers within the categories of subordinate employees or self-employed worker or independent contractors. But this classification has a series of important consequences in terms of the, the treatment of the worker, the benefits that he has, has access to, but entails Another very significant consequence is that is the applicability of antitrust norms. Antitrust norms, uh, uh, in most cases, address the balance of power and information between companies and pro potential customers. However, these legal frameworks usually prevent independent contractors from forming unions and engage in collective action, in particular, with a view of negotiating wages and other working conditions. While collective bargaining agreements do not generally fall within the scope of, uh, um, of antitrust law, the exception to this rule has been interpreted very narrowly by the courts, both at national and particular European level, with a view of not uh, allowing undue restraint of trade and uh, free and fair competition. At the same time, broad exemption from competition law for particular categories, in particular of vulnerable independent contractors that would allow, therefore, gig workers to collectively negotiate without breaching competition norms, 
have been rare. There is a case in a Dutch competition authority in a, in a 2019 uh, guidance. But besides the rarity, they may be difficult to implement in, in terms that it may be difficult to actually define the, uh, uh, the boundaries of the vulnerable categories. At the same time, proposals such as the recent European one in terms of extending and strengthening labor law tests and providing for uh, um, um, quasi binding uh, um, provision in terms of the extension of the statutory employment law to take into account gig economies, technologies and new organizational structures um, still incur in the risk of being ineffective. That is, uh, as long as employers and firms retain a strong incentive to push workers outside the statutory protections by carefully framing their position and duties in relation to the organizational structure, leaving the least powerful of, of actors unable to pursue a significant degree of economic coordination. The recourse to exist Legal frameworks, therefore, represents an inadequate response in order to tackle the most significant potential negative impacts of the level of worker protection. An antitrust solution may not be sufficient by itself, by may, but may represent uh, an, uh, an, uh, an avenue, an alternative avenue of protection, alternative to the reclassification of workers, and in part would be part of an effective framework for fairness and employment and working condition and would apply significant costs to a series of um, impactful and uh, dangerous behavior by the company through a series of punitive mechanisms that would weigh against employees' incentives to misclassify workers while also uh, allowing for um, um, a, a significant degree of uh, um, a coordination by the workers and preventing their exploitation of dominant market positions. Um, therefore, in this case, workers framed as non-employee subsidiaries or contractors or falling into the broader categories of service providers would still be granted statutory protection on one hand, but also the access to legal recourse against the risk of being coerced or disadvantaged in their remuneration or working condition, either by contract closing condition or by other significant market and economic behavior by the firm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now, last but uh, not least, uh, we will hear Nikita Liutov. And Nikita, I'm very glad to see that you are here. Uh, uh, we have heard that probably you will not be uh, here online, so it's great. Nevertheless, I have to ask you, you are used to this uh, discipline here at, uh, after speaking long presentations to if you can try to be in 10 minutes if you wish to a little bit add to your uh, outline or refresh whatever we will have an other program at uh, 4 55 so we have to be fast we still have a commentator nikita the floor is yours thank you very much dear sheila i'm also very glad uh, to see you and i uh, I don't know how to say, well, uh, how much I am devastated uh, with the situation which is happening around uh, Russia and Ukraine. In my worst dream, uh, I, in my worst nightmare, I couldn't imagine uh, when we were discussing the topics of this conference, that all these uh, COVID issues would sound now so of so little relevance compared to what is happening now, and this is not only the humanitarian situation for Russia, it is also the problem of the complete destruction of the rule of law. And uh, obviously, we were not uh, a democratic country, but it was a kind of soft uh, authoritarianism, which now transformed to something much worse. And 
in this context, it is very difficult to speak about such nice and little things as labor rights, um, specifically in COVID. But I will say a few words uh, re regarding the topic which was initially announced. By fir first of all, I think my duty as uh, the Russian citizen is to say that not everybody in Russia, far from this, supports uh, the war. And we mm, are very much uh, in favor uh, of Ukraine now. I'm not talking for everyone, but many people here are uh, against this um, situation. Uh, now, sorry for taking two minutes for this. Um, uh, the topic uh, which is announced is the application of uh, the labor law provisions in five uh, countries of our region, namely Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Belarus, uh, and Russia, uh, are associated with uh, the research which was conducted on behalf uh, of ILO regional office. Uh, by me and uh, for other colleagues. For Georgia, it was Zaharia Shvilidze, for Kazakhstan, it was uh, Muslim Hasan, for Kyrgyzstan, it was Kubanich Bek uh, Arman Kulov. And I am sorry, I cannot reveal the name of Belarusian colleague because, because of the uh, security reasons, because it is just dangerous for this person to be named uh, in the context of cooperation with the ILO. So, um, in brief, uh, what was happening with a labor law? Luckily, Tatiana has described already the situation with a collective labor law in Russia, so I will not uh, use my time for this. What can be said about all five countries is that there were not so many amendments uh, of the legislation um, in the field of labor law. Uh, rather, there were the issues uh, of the application of the existing norms, uh, which were dealing with uh, um, uh, dismissals. Uh, uh, in all five countries, the governments have taken the measures to limit the possibility of employers to um, perform um, dismissals and collective dismissals. Uh, more than that, um, in Russia, for example, it was the situation with uh, the most significant uh, uh, quarantine limitation um, in the beginning of uh, in March and May of 2020, when with uh, so-called non-working days. Um, this is a very specific uh, regime which was announced uh, by the presidential decree and it was actually uh, against the provision of um, the labor code which has a superior status compared to uh, the presidential decrees and the idea of this non-working days was that uh, uh, the employees do not have to go at work, uh, and if they cannot work uh, remotely, they just shouldn't work. But the employee employers um, have to retain all their salaries and have to pay them in full. Uh, obviously, such regulation have led uh, to the massive breaches of rights by the employers whose activities had to be suspended uh, for the um, periods of limitation. So this has uh, the government decided instead of um, provision of um, significant uh, monetary benefits to the employers to as uh, Tatiana said in respect of Russia, but this can be extended to them most of these five countries. Um, the government has uh, governments decided to impose the main burden, uh, fina financial burden uh, of the situation to employers by just forcing them to keep the employment even in the situation when they didn't have the right to go on with the activities, for example, in the restaurant businesses and uh, other sectors like this. So, in fact, the employers which didn't have any means to go on uh, with the business uh, from financial point of view had to uh, break the law and uh, they have started 
forcing um, the employees to make the things which are supposed to be voluntary. For example, um, the unpaid leaves in all five countries uh, may be taken only by the initiative of the employees. Uh, so um, uh, the situation has emerged when uh, the employers uh, have been asking uh, them to ask for this voluntary unpaid leaves. Uh, so it was uh, uh, the same was with um, the dismissals, which were uh, in a number of situation, um, fake dismissals on employee on the employees initiative. Uh, the idea is that uh, in most of the countries of the region, there still is the system of so-called labor booklets uh, for the labor lawyers of former socialist countries. The system is known. The, uh, in these labor booklets, you may fix uh, the official ground of dismissal. So some of these grounds may spoil the reputation of worker. For example, you may mark there that uh, the, the employee is uh, dismissed because of the disciplinary breaches of different kind. And uh, the employers have, uh, could uh, use this labor booklets as the means of pressure on uh, the employees to dismiss voluntarily, um, uh, backed by the threat that otherwise they would be um, dismissed on uh, uh, disciplinary grounds, which uh, could be uh, could just spoil their reputation. So, uh, understanding this, the government, uh, despite the fact that our judiciary is the independent branch of power, uh, unofficially instructed um, courts to take uh, decisions in favor of employees in any labor disputes. So. Uh, the analysis of case law shows, uh, 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 now I'm talking mainly about the Russian case law, but to a certain extent it also is applicable to other countries. So uh, the court started taking decisions uh, in any kind, even in the clear cases when the employer was uh, formally right, uh, they were taking decisions in favor of uh, employees uh, with the idea that, um, uh, again, uh, the protection of employees in such situation is uh, uh, was uh, turned uh, to employers, but uh, no, it was taken out of the responsibility of state. Um, in order to shorten myself as uh, far as possible, I can, uh, I see that I have already used nine minutes out of 10, so I'm close to finishing. Uh, uh, I'm, I may say that uh, labor inspections have uh, shown very limited capacity in protection of uh, the employees' rights in all five countries with uh, the different range of um, effectiveness, uh, but everywhere in all five countries are very limited. And this is uh, um, the other very interesting subject of discussion of the economic reforms um, uh, in all five countries, uh, uh, which uh, went to the same direction, irrespective of the political situation. Uh, and uh, some of these countries are more democratic, like Georgia or Kyrgyzstan. Some of them are more authoritarian, like Russia, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. But in all five countries, um, uh, for the last years uh, or even decades, the powers of uh, labor inspections were severely limited. Um, if we compare the national regulations uh, with um, the ILO Convention 81, Labor Inspection and 128, oh, 129, sorry, um, could be a, a, a good uh, issue of discussion, but just you know, in this short uh, speech, I can only say that, well, this is the, the situation and uh, 
not for um, not without the active role of the international financial institutions uh, advisors like international monetary funds uh, and others and uh, the social partners, as Tatiana said on the Russian example, but I can say this um, in respect of at least three countries have, uh, um, of the region, uh, Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan, have shown very little effectiveness. Uh, also, well, this is quite a political issue. They are weak in uh, these countries, mainly because of general lack of democracy. And other um, uh, kind of breach to the current um, military situation is that the limitations uh, imposed by COVID have shown um, uh, the further, I don't know why camera has switched off, uh, the limitation of uh, COVID regulation have shown the lack uh, of respect of governments to the rule of law. They have started regulating the issues which should be regulated on the level of federal, regu federal legislation by the decrease of the um, government. And uh, when we talk about Russia, uh, the same very dangerous trend have uh, emerged this year and goes on well, in current situation. So, oh, thank you for your attention. So, thank you very much. It was very good. You, we could see in, uh, in uh, this context the uh, five analyzed countries and Russia, the much not much difference, and what we could see is uh, the gap, the widening gap between a uh, former situation and the realities, and that's uh, also quite familiar uh, from sometimes. Now, I uh, would like Okay, thank you very much uh, to the Marco Biaggi Foundation for inviting me. Uh, all uh, very interesting uh, paper. I have to say that I'm a sociologist. My field area is economic sociology, but uh, I have learned a lot of things from this uh, paper. I will follow the order of uh, presentation. So let me start with uh, the paper written by Nicola, the Leonardo said La Fratta. Very interesting. Your, uh, your paper, and I agree with the importance of the union role at the local level to regulate the labor market. Uh, just a couple of uh, comments. I don't know that, that if then there is time to respond or otherwise to think it over, sure. I don't know. If, um, it's a human one right. Is, uh, is the issue of visibility of this kind of, uh, as we were talking before, because in your paper you focus on unions, but of course employers should be available to negotiate and discuss these kind of things. And we are not sure, let's say, that uh, they would be available to yeah. regulate local labor markets with, uh, uh, with unions. And connected with this, uh, there it is also important to understand if Italian unions are interested in this kind of regulation. I mean, if they want to spend time, resources, energy in it, because uh, uh, very briefly, in the metal sector, the national contract established three days of mandatory bargain uh, of mandatory training for workers, three days per year. But uh, anyway, uh, it has not been implemented uh, much. So because uh, there are uh, the issue is uh, the interest of uh, unions to apply these kind of things at the local and at workplace uh, uh, levels, and also there is you were uh, and. Uh, just staying within your paper, the number of network contracts that have been stipulated, there are important differences across our country. Of course, they are uh, much more widespread in the north of Italy than in the center and then in the south. So I don't know if this kind of local regulation, what could produce from this viewpoint? So if other, maybe not inequalities, but different kinds of development 
in different uh, uh, geographic uh, areas. Uh, the second thing uh, that um, it came to mind while reading your paper concerns uh, the governance structure that a similar uh, um, idea, interesting, innovative idea that could have because you mentioned correctly different actors, unions, uh, there are employers, then AMPAL, the national agency which is uh, responsible for active labor market policies, uh, and then a private agency which are crucial in the local labor market. And uh, yes, then uh, uh, I have to be brief. Go together, 10 minutes. Okay, okay. And so that's it. What is the governance structure that can be, if a commission is shaped, uh, who is going to design and how, substantially? Uh, well, about uh, Tatiana, thank you, Racha. I, I can talk. I mean, do you understand uh, English or do I have to wait uh, for a translation? I think Tatiana. Tatiana, ah, uh, Tatiana, are you there? Is Tatiana there? Uh, Tatiana, are you there? Yes, you think? Yes, okay, yes, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, very briefly. Uh, Sorry, uh, Tatiana, do you understand the English? Yes? Yeah, the, do you, you understand? Yes. Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, I read your paper, Tatiana, very interesting, and um, just uh, here a couple of uh, comments. So I think that, uh, okay, uh, problems in Russia have, uh, in Russia have been exacerbated by COVID-19 and now by the war, but there is uh, a problem of uh, uh, the fact that independent unionism represents uh, a minority of uh, workers. I think that uh, this is one by reading your own paper, of course, uh, strike bans and so on are very important, but there is also the lack of uh, independent uh, unionism, which is uh, uh, quite important for uh, uh, the situation of, uh, uh, of workers. And it was interesting to hear anyway, some kind of uh, uh, bottom-up unionism which is a group of workers organizing uh, through social networks and so on, and uh, organizing struggles. And uh, yes, you, are you were talking about the fact that uh, unions, uh, traditional unions, also dependent unions, and these new groups of workers uh, um, are indifferent between each other. So I just wanted to understand if a possible alliance can be developed between uh, this uh, new kind of union is of uh, bottom-up uh, worker struggles and uh, uh, traditional uh, traditional unions. Uh, but very interesting. So thank you for for your uh, paper and for your presentation. And uh, Stefano, uh, about your um, uh, yes, very briefly also here I have some comments, but uh, I will reduce them. Uh, the first one is this: it was uh, very peculiar to hear this uh, <laughs> UCF uh, uh, situation, market dominance, and all the tactics that they used to um, retain, let's say, workers. Uh, anyway, just if this case is unique, it was a curiosity. Uh, or if there are uh, not equivalent, but something similar in Europe and um, and in Italy, because really it um, it is a surprising surprising to hear that. And the second thing, if you can imagine, of course, uh, plaintiffs uh, were asking uh, in uh, the lawsuit for economic compensation and uh, to open up the market. And uh, this happened after the failure of unionization. That's clear in the paper. And it this it was just a uh, Again, an idea if you think that there can be a union role in this kind of antitrust laws, I don't know, helping uh, workers to uh, acquire some kind. I, I, I think that it's very, very difficult, but it's just, you know, an, uh, uh, an imaginative idea if you want. I don't know if it uh, can be uh, possible. And um, Nikita, thank you for your presentation. I haven't received your paper, so I will. Uh, I have read your uh, abstract, your long uh, abstract. And uh, there is one thing I don't know if you can uh, say something about it or not, because you explained uh, the situation about Russia. But uh, you were saying you you have uh, multiple countries in your uh, research. 
And um, you, um, you said in the abstract list that uh, Belarus and Kazakhstan are different a little bit from the other countries uh, about the legislation. I don't know if you can confirm this. I mean, if they effectively, um, I don't know, um, approved of something that can be better for workers. I don't know, but this was one point that uh, was curious and in case, this uh, happened, uh, how could you, uh, but it's a long question, how could you explain, because national specificities may be, I don't know, cultural or institutional, I don't know what. Well, anyway, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was very good because you had a, a, a difficult uh, situation in this. Uh, for me, if I may say, what was very interesting in the first paper, uh, it was uh, this territorial collective bargaining where, uh, that, uh, that uh, seems something novelty and probably promising, uh, and also the networking. I don't know whether I was wrong, but I, I felt some, how to say, cooperative style uh, uh, evolving. Uh, behind them, and for this reason, they were all new, but also showing back what could be utilized from history. And this is a common feature what we uh, had uh, from Stefano's paper, because when you were writing, you avoided speaking about these athletes' uh, uh, associations, but here it was that the, I would say, dictat dictatorial power of the employer could have been uh, prevented or, or uh, yes, pre blocked uh, through antitrust law. And it uh, told me, oh my goodness, the whole trade union history goes back to the Sherman Act, etc. So history seems to come back and your innovative mind is very necessary to take what is, you, you, what can be utilized from that. Uh, in in uh, uh, the post-Soviet uh, countries and uh, in, in Russia, what we see is relative, uh, uh, how to say, com com community, and I don't know whether history can help in any way overcoming that, and now I think there is a fallback. There were some promising signs throughout the last 30 years, I could say, but now I think it, it would be ir irresponsible to say any evaluation of that. So I actually, I appreciate very much this uh, frank uh, and uh, uh, summary presentation of uh, the situation. But I, uh, yes, yes, please answer. But uh, first of all, I, I would oh, like yeah. to ask uh, the audience uh, uh, who remained. <laughs> Uh, but it's there difficult, yes. Now, if you would answer, I, yeah, I would. I but please come oh, here, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your consideration. Um, I know that this model uh, is, and, uh, it's hypothetical, it's hypothetical, but we are, uh, we have, legal provision that can help us to, to implement it, to improve it. Uh, what we have considered uh, three points to, to, to improve it, that I, <laughs> I wrote, yeah. Firstly, is the necessity to, uh, uh, to a strong training of trade unionists. <laughs> what means it? It means that they, trade unionists have to, to know better the history and have to know better uh, those legal provisions and have to know better this uh, this close uh, link between uh, um, between uh, uh, the knowledge of the, the flows of workforce in the territory and the possibility uh, knowing having this information of uh, a better control over uh, labor force and later over uh, working condition. 
The second one is the rule, uh, the, the, the role, sorry, of municipal, not so, not just municipal, but also um, regional administration uh, that, of course, have to intervene in this model in order to, to activate the, the program. Uh, and it's, it's provided, in any case, by the protocol signed on the 23 December of the 2021. So it's a bind. The third, and that's really <laughs> maybe <clears throat> the most complicated to apply, is the identification. Excuse me for interrupting. I am being so impolite, but I was told now that the celebration is starting. Oh, okay, already. okay, okay, okay. So uh, we have to, to. We will discuss, I hope. We will have the time. And uh, I'm so sorry for not okay. giving. Okay. And uh, excuse me, but we had unfortunate events. We have to go to the celebration. Okay. Thank you. That's Thank you, okay. everyone. That's and uh, sorry for these unfortunate circumstances. Thank you. 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 Thank you.